should I say? Buonasera. Oh, good day, great. Or should I say, rigidi? <laughs> Very good, Rosa, but wrong. Oh, you know, Greta, we Australians have strange ways of saying things with our mouths. What do you mean? Well, we call everything what it is not. Eh? Well, you know, a redhead man is called blue, a bald man is called curly, and a policeman is yes, called... Yes, right, we know what a policeman's called. <laughs> Why is it so, Greet? I don't know, it's just the Australian sense of humour, like... Well, like... Uh... Oh, you mean like poofter bashing? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like... It's very hard being an Australian Greek, you know. It took me many goes to become one. You, an Australian? How could you be an Australian? No worries. I'm dinky die. Fair dinkum. Women's Weekly bloke. <laughs> I can't see you as an Australian. I got a piece of paper to prove it, do you? Well, no, I don't. There you are. You see, I'm more Australian than you are. <laughs> In fact, about 20 kilos more. <laughs> It was a joke. I got it, Rosa, I got it. I remember the day I turned into an Australian. It was payday, 1954. Oh, how I remember that day I was naturalised. I walked out of the plastic sandal factory, just another hard-working migrant, and I came back the next day as an Australian, and my life had changed. How come? I went on strike. <laughs> it's not all beer and skittles being Australian, you know. It took me two goals to become one. Things were hard for wogs in those days. <laughs> well, Carazzo hadn't been invented and we didn't have Al Grasby. How come it took you two goes to be naturalised? Oh, well, I tell you, Greta. I stood there with one hand on the Bible and the other on my heart. And the man, he said, swear to the Queen. So I said, bloody Queen, and he threw me out of the... <laughs> I did. I just said so. Oh, how embarrassing. What about Enzo? What did he do? Was he there? He wouldn't talk to me. He'd been made an Australian the day before. But Enzo, he turned into a real Australian. What do you mean? He went out that very day and bought a hill's hoist. So? <laughs> so, we lived in a flat. <laughs> I had to tell the landlord it was a television aerial, but he didn't believe me. <laughs> Why not? Television started two years later. <laughs> but of course, in those days, we didn't need television for our entertainment. Enzo, he'd come home from the hula hoop factory and sit in front of that hill's hoist and laugh and laugh. Ah, <laughs> oh, how I miss him, my dear departed Enzo, who is no longer with us because he passed away and went up into heaven because he departed this life and died. He's dead, you know. <laughs> Yes, I know, Rosa. We all miss Enzo. He was quite a man. The only man who ever owned a purple Victor. <laughs> <laughs> and with a St. Christopher medal on the fuel tank. <laughs> that was Enzo's little chunk. <laughs> Enzo, he loved to laugh. He laughed all day and all, all night as well. Laugh, he laughed all his life. He was laughing when the bus hit him. <laughs> but then Enzo was crazy. <laughs> oh, Greta, I forgot to tell your father that you and Bruno are coming here for dinner. Well, it's a bit late now. I'm here and Bruno's on his way. Oh, Dad will just have to lump it. I wonder what he will say. <laughs> what he's said every night for the last 20,000 years. What? I'll show you. Yeah, I'm home. <laughs> Hello, Ted. How was your day? Bloody shambles, of course. Someone should blow wogs, nuns, popes and valiants up. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good, Greta. You're very funny. You should be an actor. But you should not laugh at your father. There are enough people doing that already without his family. <laughs> but that's exactly what he's like. Oh, he's not. Yes, so too. Do I ever get... Hello, my darling daughter. Or, hello, Greta. How is my little girl? No, it's... What are you doing here, Miss Smarty Goanna Legs? <laughs> Come here, you're just making this up. Your father's nothing like that. Yeah, I'm home. Hello, Ted. How was your day? Bloody shambles, of course. Someone should blow Catholic parking cops up. <laughs> oh, dear. What has happened now? Well, there I am, Rosa, casually blasting the horn at this pushy nun on the pedestrian crossing. <laughs> when suddenly this Catholic voting parking cop leaps out of the bushes. Hello, Daddy dear. How are you? 
What are you doing, Miss Marty Wombat Bum? <laughs> you see, Rosa, you don't care at all, do you, Dad? You don't love me one little bit. Love who? Who don't I love? What's going on? Nothing. Well, what's she going on about, Rosa? Nothing. Oh, God, you've both been watching that soppy days of our lives again, have you? <laughs> no, typical male attitude. Yeah, yeah, but you've been listening to that Helen Reddy record again. No, I haven't. All right, it's that Germaine Greer record again. Don't Ridiculous. Oh, I'm not ridiculous. I was in the army. So stick that, Miss Smarty Goanna Legs, in your pipe and smoke it. Now stop this squabbling, both of you. Fighting will get you nowhere. Look at the Italian Parliament. Bloody Italian Parliament. Rubbish. All those jabbering eye guys. Phew, they all get to have a seat in there. It's like one huge big dunny. <laughs> you walk in, you sit down for a while and they walk out again. No wonder their engines are always in their boots. <laughs> Do with well, it. I don't know, but if I said it, it must be right. Yeah, yeah, sure, Dad. Stop saying that. Why don't you go home and take the wog for a walk? <laughs> You're referring to my husband, Bruno. And my son. You keep your kids out of this, Rosa. I've got enough trouble with my own. Bloody stupid Thelma, it's all her fault. She's got a lot to answer for. Let's have children, Ted. Let's have a family, Ted. It'll be fun. Bloody stupid woman, be more fun standing in a bucket of nana custard. <laughs> You know what I mean. Where's the wog hiding? He's not here. Oh, thank God for that. He's coming later. Oh, God, the whole world's plotting against me as usual. Where's me paper? In the lounge room. Oh. Bloody pushy daughters. She's supposed to be a son. But did she listen to her father? No. Oh, no. Typical bloody woman. Change her mind at the drop of a hat. Oh, well, how's not the reason why? I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to worry about anything anymore. Eat, drink, be merry and die. For tomorrow we... I don't know. Wash the car, I suppose. <laughs> There's bloody rain for sure. A man can't take a trick. Not one lousy trick. From the moment a man is born, he's battling against it. Life is just one big, long battle. It's like the war. Except the war was fun. <laughs> the government stepped in and, and stopped it all. Typical. As soon as a man becomes a war hero, the politicians ruin his fun. You, a war oh, hero. God, pick on <laughs> Grandmother, give a man a heart attack. Where'd you come from? The kitchen. Oh, well, get back in the line, where you belong. <laughs> Man's not safe with Wog sneaking up behind him, slithering all over the place. Yeah, yeah, sure, Ted. Put that down. Leave that beer alone. I fought and died for that beer during the war. <laughs> you? You're in the catering corps. And even then you got captured. <laughs> yeah, well, I was vastly outnumbered. It took 300 kraut to capture me. How many? Well, one. But she was huge, and if she'd had a gun... If she'd had a gun, I'm sure she would have shot me. You were captured by a woman without a gun. How come she didn't have a gun? Nuns don't carry guns. <laughs> you, the hero of Wombat Crescent, were actually captured by an unarmed German nun. No, she was Swiss. You were captured by a neutral nun. What were you doing in Switzerland? Well, I was lost. <laughs> Never trust a nun, mate. One minute they're giving you a dink on their bike and next minute they're dobbing you into the Gestapo. Ted, a nun would not dob you into the Gestapo. Well, Sister Heidi did. She got very stroppy when I took my clothes off. <laughs> what were you trying to do? I wanted to get a disguise. I just wanted to swap uniforms. No sense of humour, nuns. <laughs> next thing, the Germans are everywhere and I'm standing there in my khaki underpants. So that's why you hate nuns? I don't hate nuns. I just think they're overrated. That's all. You wouldn't catch me being one. Well, you tried to. <laughs> oh, well, that was different. I was desperate. It was every nun for himself in those days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Look, stop all this hero worship stuff and let me read the paper in peace. You don't read the paper. You just look at the pictures. I do not. I read every word, even the, even the small print, even the little ads. Here we go. I'll read you one. Men... Relax and be pampered by Cindy and her gorgeous girls at the Helping Hand Massage Park. Oh, pickle me, grandmother! So that's why you're always reading the paper and we thought it was Mandrake. Uh, no, 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 it was a mistake. I'll, I'll read you another one. Here you are. Here's another one. You could be rich and not know it. If your name is Bullpit, call this number and learn something to your advantage. See, I read all the words, all the... Struth that's Almighty! That's my name! Pickle me, grandmother! I'm gonna be rich! Now, about this you could be rich bloke. Oh, well, Ted finally got in touch with him this morning, and uh, Mr. McDingle is coming here tonight. Mm, something smells very fishy to me, Rosa. Ah, oh, that's the octopus soup we're having for dinner. 
Well, you'll never get Dad eating octopus soup. I know, so I told him it was pea soup with feet. Oh. <laughs> Hello, I'm home. I'll see you, Rosa. Hello, Dad. Uh, bye, Dad. I'll be off now. Just a minute, just a minute. Aren't you going to ask your firstborn and eldest father what sort of a day he had? <laughs> All right, then. Hello, Dad. How was your day? None of your business. <laughs> Someone should blow three-legged fox terriers up. <laughs> oh, dear. What has happened now? Well, I get out of my car and drop me keys. I get down on my knees to pick them up, and next thing, whack! Jack's clamped around me, randy little animal. <laughs> I could mind to whip another leg off. That'll slow him down a bit. <laughs> anyway, where's me paper? In the lounge room? Yeah. Oh, go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on. Yeah, listen, Dad. No, not now. I've got to concentrate on getting rich. Dad, who is this McDingle bloke? Oh, Hamish McDingle, that's the, that's the solicitor who lives in these foreign places that are not in Australia. Hamish <laughs> McDingle. Hamish McDingle. Now, this is a stab in the dark, but uh, would he be Scottish? That's the joint. Scotland. The place where all those pom blokes wear skirts. <laughs> yeah, and they, they, when they talk, they sound like they're gargling. You'll be here any minute. Yeah, what for? Well, I don't know. My name's Bullpit. I'm going to hear something to my advantage. Well, you can write Aspro in Latin. Why don't you hang around and translate for me? Well, that'll be him now. Uh, uh, to make yourself useful and go and get Rosa to answer the door. Why Rosa? Well, she doesn't pay any rent and I've got to eat all that wog food. <laughs> Bloody soup with feet indeed. He only said that because it's probably got spinach in it. Go on, go and get her. Yeah, but... Rosa, answer the door. You answer it. It's your door, Bill. I left mine at home at the old house with the tenants. <laughs> now, listen, woman. Oh, God, I don't believe this. Get I'll your smart-ass no. university hands off my door. It's, it's my door and I've just about paid it off. All right, all right. Man can't get any peace around here. What do you want? When you come in, talk slowly so my interpreter can interp you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Bullpit. It is a pleasure to meet you. Right, just a minute. What did he say, Craig? He said, good evening, Mr. Bullpit. It is a pleasure to meet you. Right, well, tell him I'm delighted to have him here and welcome him to my home. Uh, he's delighted. Oh, Dad! Uh, go on, tell him. <laughs> Daddy's speaking. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Bullpit. Just a minute, just a minute. I'll listen to you when my interpreter's ready to start working. Hold on. Nobody move. That was English. Of course. He's speaking English. Yes, Dad. Well, why doesn't somebody tell me? God, a man has to do everything in this house. God, it's hard. Uh, excuse me again, but do you mind if I sit down? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I could do what you like. Obviously, nobody cares what I think. <laughs> Would you like a drink, Mr. Oh, McKinley? here we go again, chucking me grog around like it's water. How kind. Uh, just a wee dram, thank you. Oh, bad luck. We ran out of drams yesterday. <laughs> I'm go without. Dad! A wee dram of the... A whiskey. A drama whiskey. Scottish, uh, of course. Yeah. Pickle me grandmother. Whiskey and scotch. How big is a dram? Oh, you know, it's about the size of, uh, what you call it here, a schooner? <laughs> a schooner full of scotch? Pickle me grandmother, that's enough to pickle me grandmother. <laughs> uh, go and get him some milk till we find out what he wants. I'll get you the drink. <laughs> Mr. Bulpit, over the last few months I've journeyed long and far, from the highlands to the lowlands. From the high road to the low road, from the Loch Ness to the Unloch Ness, <laughs> over fair seas and foul, searching, always searching. What for, your brain? <laughs> <laughs> All that gibberish, get on with it. Where's the money come in? Mr. Bulpit, I am searching for one man, the sole surviving heir to the clan McBulpit lands. Oh, it's me, it's me! Just a minute. On the McBulpit lands, there are many God fearing traditional crofters and shepherds. A huge and crumbling castle dating back to the days of Dunk and the Dreadful in 1257 and a 50-acre supermarket. <gasps> it's me! It's me! Uh, uh, just a minute, Mr. Bulpit. I must have proof. I'll get your proof. How much do you want? <laughs> I need to know beyond doubt that you are the heir to the title Duncan, Dougal, Lockenvar, Rob Roy, Wayne McBulpit. Wayne? A Sassenach nigger in the woodpile. Lady Mary Dreadful didn't have seen him until it was too late and the dark deed was done. Hence the old Scottish saying, Wayne, Wayne, go away. <laughs> but enough of ancient Scottish legends. Do you believe you could be this man? It's me, it's me. Oh, I'm rich. Oh, I'm going to inherit Scotland. Well... There you have it, Mr. Bullpit. Oh, don't be so formal, Hamish. You may call me Laird Bullpit. Oh, not yet. Not until you have proof that you are the long-lost heir I've been searching for. Oh, I'll get you proof. Oh, if I even have to make it up myself. <laughs> what? Yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, listen, what sort of proof are you looking for? 
Oh, the usual documents, family trees. Oh, I've got a gum tree. It's a very nice one outside. <laughs> a genealogical tree, Mr. Mm, Moore. You're making it hard, Hamish, old boy. <laughs> <laughs> that bloody Harry Butler won't let us uh, take any uh, fancy plants into the country, you know. A family tree, Dad. Yes, in fact, anything that will prove you have Scottish blood. Oh, well, no probs, then. <laughs> or there's just one other wee thing. Uh, what other wee thing? Money. How wee is this money? Oh, let me see now. Up and down, round about, to and fro, here and there, in and out. Get on with it. Shall we say 5,000? 5,000? Pickle me, grandmother. That's the biggest we I've ever heard of. <laughs> What's this five grand for? Oh, you can appreciate that I've run up a lot of expenses in my search for the ancient lead, uh, gratuities and disbursements and such like. Yeah, five grand's an awful lot of such likes. I'm sure when we prove your claim, you'll find that five thousand is a small price to pay to become filthy rich. How filthy? Disgusting filthy. <laughs> Twenty million at least. Twenty million? And that's just sheep. Good night. I'll be back tomorrow. 20 million sheep. Oh, sorry, the moon. Outside, it's a bra brick moonlight night. Good night. <laughs> Do you hear that, boy? Oh, I'm going to be rich. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, Dad. Now, listen, you're not Scottish, you've never been Scottish, and who's ever heard of Scots blood in our family? Well, oh, maybe not in your family, mate, but our family is chocker with tartan blood. <laughs> you must have seen the way I hoe into that shortbread. <laughs> I'm always eating Scottish food. Well, like what? Big Macs. <laughs> yeah, all right, now look, given that there's a chance in millions that you convince this Hamish freak, where are you, the Laird McBullpit of Wombat Crescent, going to find 5,000 bucks? <laughs> oh, no probs, Mr. Smarty Disparate Dealer. I'm going to ring the travel agent right now. Why? Your mother's in Europe, right? Yes, yeah, so. Well, I'm going to cash in her return ticket. <laughs> And give the money to Hamish. Hey, but what about Mum? She's got a thumb she can hitchhike. <laughs> oh, Rita, I'm so worried about poor Selma. Hitchhiking around Europe in winter. She'll wear the thumb out of her glove. <laughs> Bruno said not to worry. He's got everything under control. Well, it doesn't seem very under control to me. He's going to go through with this, you know. He's already got the five grand in cash, not to mention all sorts of strange documents and photos. Has anyone thought, just for a moment, that this could possibly be true? No, Rosa, it couldn't possibly be true, could it? No. Well, I don't know, Craig. Stranger things have happened. Look at Doris Pillbeam, who lived next door to me, only in the next street. <laughs> well, she suddenly became a millionaire overnight. How? She married one. <laughs> That's not exactly the same thing, is it, Rosa? I mean, it's not by chance. It's not a stroke of good luck. Oh, yes, it was. She was ugly like an old boot. <laughs> Where is Dad? Oh, he's been in his room for hours, assembling all the documents. You know, he's got enough stuff there to prove that he built Scotland. <laughs> Not to mention that Macbeth was Muhammad Ali before he took up boxing. <laughs> what about the 5,000? Couldn't we grab it and hide it? Yeah, there's something strange about that MacDingle bloke. Where'd Dad put the money? In the wall safe, behind the picture. Let's just grab it. Mm. Oh, but I don't know the combination. Well, it's written on the back of the picture. <laughs> Why? So Dad doesn't forget it, of course. <laughs> oh, of course. Oh, I don't know, Craig. I don't think we should. Well, it's for his own good, and uh, well, think about Mum's thumb. Besides, he'll never know. Open it. Get your hands off that. Off what? You know what? My get-rich money. Oh, give it up, Dad. You'll never prove yourself to be the heir of the McBullpit millions. You reckon, do you? Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe it. It's Bonnie Prince Teddy of Wombat Crescent. Watch it, mate. I'm a laird and I'll chuck you in the dungeons of me castle. Or better still, I'll chuck you in the deep freeze of me supermarket. Yeah, 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 yeah sure, sure, Dad. Dad. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you... Get down. Get down. Anyone alive up there? <laughs> Dad, I always wanted to know what Scotsmen wore under their kilts and now I do. What? What? Oh, Ted Bullpit, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> I couldn't find anything else. I didn't know if Tom, Dick and Harry was going to be gazing up there. What have you got in there? How dare you! A man's sporran is sacred. <laughs> Leave it alone. You don't find people grabbing at Prince Charles' sporran, do you? Yeah, you sure do. Yeah. Oh, Struth Almighty, that'll be him. Come himself. Hamish, come to crown me. 
Good evening, Mr. Bulpit. Ah, uh, Ock Eye, the new uh, Haggis, uh, Loch Ness, Aberdeen, Glasgow, Bagpots, uh, Johnny Walker, Harris Tweed, Sportscoat. <laughs> I've just been taking my wee caber out for a toss. If ever I need a proof, this is it. You look magnificent, man. Just like Duncan the Dreadful himself. You uh, are truly the laird of the McBulpit lands. <laughs> Give me the money. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, here you go. Here's the, the 5,000. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Uh, just a minute. Don't I get a, a royal certificate or something? You really want one? Bloody oath I do. It's in the mail. Can I? Oh, just oh, a minute, oh, I'll take that money. Oh, McStruth, who are you? I got your money back, Ted. Oh, what are you doing, Wog? He's just made me laird of everything. Yes, Ted, you and a thousand others. He's been pulling this con trick all over the world, haven't you? Hamish McDingle, alias Boris Cyril Bogdanovich, alias Wing Me How Luck, alias Pedro Jose. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Tickle me, grandmother, I'm poor again. So you see, Ted, the local cops checked him out as soon as Craig told me about the whole deal. They've been after him for months. Is there a reward? No. Oh, of course, I never believed him for a moment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. sure. Uh, stop saying that. Yes? Yes? Oh, it's the same ticket he cashed in yesterday. Oh, oh okie dokie, I suppose I will have to do. Yes, thank you. Bye. Well, Ted, I've managed to rebook Thelma's return ticket, but there is one problem. What? Well, since Thelma paid for it, prices have changed. So? So it's costing you an extra $500. Pickle me, grandmother, they got me again. <laughs> <laughs>